history, this Sunday has come to be known as Letare Sunday. Letare is the Latin for rejoice. This is taken from Isaiah 66, which is the entrance antiphon for this Sunday Mass. Rejoice, Jerusalem, and all who love her. Be joyful, all who are in mourning. Exalt and be satisfied at her consoling breast. Our Gospel passage for this fourth Sunday of Lent is the famous parable of the prodigal son. Again, this is unique to St. Luke. Only St. Luke put this into writing and thus included in the Gospel. We thank St. Luke for writing this parable. Otherwise, we shall not have this very powerful and beautiful lesson of the Lord Jesus about the compassion and mercy of God the Father. Our Gospel passage is from St. Luke, chapter 15. Starts with verses 1 to 3. These verses set the setting and the context of the parable. And then it jumps to verses 11 to 32, the parable of the prodigal son. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine, and he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and he has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son has been out in the field and on his way back. As he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him his daughter the fattened calf, he said to him, 
My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The parable is well known under the title Parable of the Prodigal Son. Here, distress is in the sin of the younger son, who after collecting his inheritance went to a far country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation, which can be translated as luxurious living or prodigal living, literally throwing away his inheritance. Other commentators give other titles to this parable depending on the element of the story where the emphasis is placed, like the parable of the merciful father, emphasis on the compassion and forgiveness of the father, the parable of the two sons, emphasis on the contrast between the repentant younger son and the unforgiving elder son, the parable of the lost son, this is if we place the parable in the context of the two earlier parables. The parable of the prodigal son is the third of a series of parables. The first is the parable of the lost sheep. The second is the parable of the lost coin. And third, the parable of the prodigal or lost son. Anyway, that is just a note on the title of the parable. Now let us go to the elements of the parable and make some reflections. The sin of the younger son, the great compassion of the father, and the unforgiving elder son. The Lord Jesus told this parable in response to the protest of the scribes and Pharisees. In verses 1 to 3, the Pharisees were surprised and offended because the Lord was sitting and eating with known public sinners, the adulterer, the adulteress, the prostitutes, and the tax collectors. The point of the Lord was that he came to seek out the lost, and there will be great rejoicing in heaven compared to the joy of a feast when a sinner repented. There were two sons. The younger one demanded from his father his share of the inheritance, and the father complied. Probably you have heard sermons and homilies citing this as very rude and evil on the part of the younger son. Some homilists explain that inheritance are distributed and handed over to the children when the parents die. So when the younger son asked for his inheritance, he was in effect saying to his father, I wish you were dead. While this may be true, but perhaps this is a bit modern explanation. In the scriptures, the inheritance is God-given. The inheritance is not mainly the wealth of the father. Primarily, inheritance is the promised land. God gave the land to Israel, and when Israel was about to enter the land, the land was divided according to the 12 tribes. Then, in the tribe, the land was divided according to the families. That is their inheritance. The land is passed on to the next generation. So when the son asks for his share, the sin is not so much the greed of the younger son. The sin was that as soon as he got the inheritance, he left. He has given away what God has given to his family, to his tribe, as the inheritance. He has broken his relationship with his father, with his family, and with his tribe. And not only that, after perhaps selling and converting his inheritance into money, he left the land and went to another country. He left the land where God has brought them to settle and went to a country which was not Israelite territory or a Gentile country. The parable made this clear 
when the younger son spent all his wealth on loose and immoral living and was left with nothing, he went to find a job and he landed in taking care of pigs. No one would find a pig farm in any Israelite territory because according to the Kashrut law, which is the regulations that prohibit the eating of certain foods and require that other foods be prepared in a specified manner. We know, according to this law, pigs are among the animals that are considered unclean and should not be eaten. And the proverbial rock bottom was where this younger son found himself. He was so hungry that he desired to eat the food given to the pigs, but even that was denied to him. He was not only suffering, but he has lost every inch of his dignity. He was living with the pigs. He was literally with the beasts. Parang namumuhay na siya, hindi isang tao, pero bilang isang hayo. Every first century Jew will see in the story the theme of the exile, being in another and gentle country, far from the promised land, life of suffering and misery, stripped of any dignity. In the Old Testament, exile is always connected with sin. It reminded them of the Assyrian exile and the Babylonian exile. We perhaps have the image of sin as breaking of a rule. But in scripture, the image of going away and breaking any relationship with God and with God's people, God's family, is an image of sin. Sin brings about a condition of exile. That is, one is away from the reality of God's inheritance. This younger son had an epiphany. Dahil sa hirap niya, natauhan siya. Because of his misery, he realized how lucky the servants in his father's house were. Though they were servants, they were taken care of. So he said, I shall arise and go to my father. The process of repentance started. The theme of death and coming back to life. The New American Bible translated it as, I shall get up and go to my father. But if we go to the other translations, example, the Dewey Reims Bible, we read, I shall arise and go to my father. Sin brings about death, and repentance and forgiveness bring about life. I like this part very much, the part when the father and the younger son met. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. Long before the son decided to return to his father's house, the father was already waiting for him. The father in his heart has already forgiven the son and was longing for him to return. The father ran. He threw himself on the neck of his son, embraced him, and kissed him. This image is very emotional and very powerful. And the son prepared this act of contrition, a short prayer admitting his sin against heaven, which means his sin against God and against his father. And he asked to be treated as a servant because he was unworthy. But we notice the father did not respond to this act of contrition of his son but instead said to the servants, Get the finest robe, place a ring in his finger, shoes on his feet, and kill the fattened calf. The father declared, Let us celebrate with a feast, because the son of mine was dead and has come to life again, which is the theme of sin as death and forgiveness as coming back to life. He was lost and has been found which is the theme of exile and coming back to the land. The father's response to the coming home of his son was one of mercy, joy, and favor. 
he gave him the finest robe, ring on his finger, shoes on his feet, and a feast. The finest robe is an echo of the story of Joseph, the favorite son of Jacob. Jacob gave Joseph the coat of many colors, a long ornamented dress. The son who went away and returned received so much love that he seemed to appear was the favorite son. The heart of the father is so big that his love is much beyond our sin. The Lord could have ended the parable here. The lost son has been found already. But since the parable was a response to the reaction of the scribes and Pharisees that the Lord was sitting and eating with sinners, the Lord continued the parable with the reaction of the elder son to the coming home of his brother. Unlike the father, the reaction of the elder brother was anger. He became angry with his father, even did not like to enter the house of his father anymore. See here the parallel. In the beginning, it was the younger son who went away from his father's house. Now, the elder son did not want to enter into his father's house. He broke relationship with his father. But look at what the father did. He went out of the house to plead with his elder son to join them in the celebration. We are given a window into the heart of the elder son, which is very revealing. He said to his father, Look, all these years I serve you, and not once did I disobey your orders. He saw himself only as a servant. While this is good, we are all servants of God the Father. But if we only consider ourselves as servants, there is something wrong, because we are also sons and daughters of God. That is why we call him father. The elder son continued, Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. He wanted to celebrate with his friends and not with his father. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fat and calf, the elder son distanced himself not only from his father, but also from his brother. He could not call the younger son as his brother. Again, see the response of the father. My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead, has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Why did Jesus end the parable in this way? We go to the context of this parable. The scribes and the Pharisees were questioning why Jesus was welcoming sinners. Jesus was showing them the kind of God God the Father is. God is a merciful, compassionate, and forgiving God. He rejoices when one repentant sinner goes back to Him. If we read the two other parables before the parable of the prodigal son, they conclude there is peace in heaven or there is rejoicing in heaven over one repentant sinner than over the other righteous who do not need repentance. Naisip ko lang, if you want the angels, the saints, our Blessed Mother, the Holy Trinity to have a feast in heaven, na mag-celebrate sila ng piyesta sa langit, let us repent. When we see others going back to God in repentance, let us join in the happiness and joy happening in heaven. There is a feast going on in heaven over one 